Hey guys, it's C.S. Joseph with csjoseph.life. Uh, filming from my, uh, and recording from my uh, deck tonight because I have been exiled out here because my children are visiting at random and uh, definitely not on the schedule, but uh, their mother called me and uh, needed my help, so I rose to the occasion and uh, took uh, my children so she could handle uh, some important business of hers. And uh, here we are. And if you also notice, it's also why I haven't put out a lecture, at least since Tuesday, because of how long it's been. But, I mean, hey, I'm here. I mean, I got my, like, deck light thing. And uh, it's kind of cool. I kind of like it. Uh, but uh, as far as, like, actually seeing my face, <laughs> yeah, good luck. But that's okay. We're just more here to, like, actually hear me instead of, like, potentially... Uh, you know, see my face as it were. So I'll do my best uh, with our really, really uber crappy lighting, but I didn't want any more days to go by without getting another lecture out. And besides, I mean, as long as you can kind of like mostly tell what I'm doing here or basically hear me, I'm sure we'll get through it, right? So anyway, tonight's subject, uh, it is season 15, episode six. We're gonna be talking about the difference between affiliative rules versus pragmatic rules. This goes in our series uh, to how to understand and how to use the type grid, basically, and uh, what that means, uh, you know, what it, what it means uh, for you or anyone else using the type grid. We've been talking about direct versus informative. We've been talking about uh, initiating versus responding, uh, as well as movement versus control. Each of these components are tools in our tool test in determining the interaction styles. Uh, we talked about earlier this week, uh, um, uh, abstraction versus uh, concrete and how that's utilized in determining the temperaments. And this is the second tool of the three tools that we're going to be utilizing to determine the temperaments. And these tools are what it means to be affiliative and what it means to be pragmatic. So tonight's episode, we're going to be talking about the differences between being affiliative versus pragmatic and how that basically, you know, would make sense in that regard. Uh, so yeah, uh, Affiliative versus uh, pragmatic. Now, before I begin, I want to actually do a little bit of a disclaimer here because I've been noticing some people have been struggling uh, with season 15 a little bit because of a lack of this disclaimer. So, uh, so the disclaimer is basically to talk about, you know, primary versus secondary, right? So primary, uh, primary and secondary. So imagine like a yin and yang. Um, so you have the yang is the white part with the little black dot, which is a little yin in there because primarily yang is all about, you know, the, what's firm, uh, whereas what's pliable is yin, but it has the secondary trait of the yin in the primary side of the yang, whereas the other side of the yin has the secondary trait of the yang because it's got the little white dot in the black part, which is the yin side. Why is this relevant? Well, it's relevant because when you look at the four sides of the mind, essentially, uh, when it looks like, when, you, when you're looking at uh, the four sides of the mind, in the four sides of the mind, you have uh, the ego, you have the subconscious, you have the uh, unconscious, and you have the superego, okay? The four sides of the mind. Now, the subconscious, specifically, the subconscious uh, is also known as the anima and the animus. And the anima and the animus is always uh, the opposite gender of what your ego is. So if you're, if you're a, um, if you are a member of the, uh, um, you know, biologically you are a male, right? Then uh, mentally, you know, you would uh, have, you know, your subconscious would actually be female, you know, and, and it's and it's the other way around for like women, uh, they have, uh, you know, male subconscious. So everyone actually has secondary male or female traits versus like their primary female uh, male traits. Now, I, now, I don't worry about like like the transgenderism argument. Actually, this fits in partly with uh, transgenderism, and I'm actually going to be doing a deep dive into transgenderism in the, in the future to show you how it manifests, how it works, how it comes, uh, how it how it is uh, mechanically uh, within, uh, how it represents itself mechanically within a person's uh, psychology, within the four sides of their mind, etc. So, when I do that. Uh, we'll be able to uh, kind of have a better understanding of how that works. But anyway, for, for the sake of this discussion, um, primary and secondary is very important. So, so listen, everybody can be direct. Everyone can be informative. 
Everyone can be movement, everyone can be control, everyone can be initiating, everyone is responding, everyone is abstract, everyone is concrete, everyone is affiliative, everyone is pragmatic, and then there's the third uh, tool which we'll be talking about in our next lecture within the series as well. But everyone has all of these traits. There isn't anyone that doesn't have any of these traits. So you have to understand everybody has these traits. Now, it's just which of these traits they use primarily it's all about primary versus secondary, right? Because some of these traits are used primarily, and so, so half these traits are used primarily, the other half are used secondarily, right? So why is that? Because when someone's in their ego, they're primarily in their ego, and we're looking at what traits are being used by their ego. So if these traits are used primarily, it's what's being used by their ego, because we're trying to identify their ego. That's what the type grid is all about. You're identifying their ego, right? It's all about identifying their ego. So you have to identify the ego. Once you know their ego, you instantly know the four sides of the mind, and then you know all of their eight cognitive functions. You know where they, how they think, how they feel, where their insecurity lies, where their worry is, what makes them the happiest. Uh, you know, you know where their innocence exists, you know where they're responsible, etc. You, you, you know where their wisdom is, you know what they're unaware of. You have all of these different things that you're aware of, but you just have to identify their ego, because once you identify their ego, you're good to go. And luckily for us, the ego has these different tools or these different traits and uses them on a primary basis, and then the other ones are secondary, right? They're very secondary traits for the other sides of their mind, because they're primarily in their ego, okay? So just remember that anyone can be direct, anyone can be informative. It's just which one is the person communicating in primarily? You know, what's their primary interaction style? What's their primary temperament? That's the point. We're just trying to identify the primary. So yes, everyone can do everything. And yes, it gets confusing. But if you just think for a minute and focus on what is being done primarily, which of these traits or tools are being used primarily by the person that you're analyzing or yourself, for example, which ones you are using primarily, focus on that, okay? Oh, what do I do more? Or what does he do more, right? That's all you have to do. It's like greatest to least. So just focus on the graders and you'll be successful. You'll learn how to use the type grid. So anyway, that being said, let's now talk about the difference between affiliative versus pragmatic. So we talked about abstract versus concrete, which is literally um, someone abstract is an intuitive, someone who's concrete is a sensor, right? It's just identifying if they're an intuitive or a sensor, essentially, that is abstract or concrete. Fair enough. And again, this is all according to Dr. Linda Behrens. Uh, she wrote the book, uh, Understanding Others, uh, Understanding Yourself and Others. Here it is, although you probably can't even see the title here, you know, Understanding Yourself and Others. And this is an introduction to the Four Temperaments 4.0, version 4.0. And it's like a series of books that Linda Behrens did. So this content is taken directly out of her books. I'm not here to like plagiarize or claim that this is my work, it's not. Uh, Dr. Linda Behrens has been excellent and in my opinion, in my opinion, Dr. Linda Behrens is absolutely the authority on trying to type other people in terms of identifying people's types, right? Whereas Dr. John Beebe would have more of a authority on, on you know, cognitive functions. Dr. Linda Behrens is, is like the authority on temperaments, interaction styles, and being able to identify people. I support Dr. Linda Behrens and then her work and how it relates to Plato, uh, you know, for Plato's Republic, etc. And I completely reject David Kiersey as a result. David Kiersey is absolutely terrible and not someone I recommend. And actually, in Linda Behrens' book about the temperaments, she actually calls out Kiersey saying, oh yeah, Kiersey's terminology and whatnot is not exactly like something, you know, helpful it's because the terms kind of get they confuse people right i mean i'm confused a lot by by curiosity terminology so i don't like viewing it you know i don't like having anything to do with his uh, terms for temperaments but a lot of people are used to Kiersey's temperament names, so I use some of them, uh, although I completely disagree with his point in calling the rationals the rationals because, I'm sorry, half of the rationals are actually irrational if you look at the difference between TE and TI. And I'm sure Linda Behrens would agree with me because she also has her own names as well, but I don't use them because I'm just trying to make it easier for everyone, you know. 
uh, I'm not here to like espouse what I know to try to gain like you know notoriety within the psychological community I don't care about that I care about educating and informing the lay person right the profane I'm trying to get it to everyone and not just some subset of people because I really don't care about like having notoriety in the psychological community. I really don't care. I care about you folks getting educated and you folks being able to identify your type and the types of other people and then thus knowing the four sides of their mind and knowing uh, their, uh, their cognitive function so that you can have a better relationship with any human being in your life as well as understand yourself because if you're able to understand yourself, you're able to have a better life because that's the truth. I want you to have a better life. You need to have a better life and I know how to get it so for you, so I'm teaching you to do these things so that you can have a better life as a result of having this knowledge. So, okay, so with that, um, let's, let's define uh, what affiliative and pragmatic is. So affiliative people, um, affiliative people are two of the temperaments. They're the guardians and they are the idealists. So guardians and idealists are affiliative. So what does affiliative mean? Affiliative focuses on uh, people. Uh, they, they focus on uh, groups or community, um, uh, group effectiveness, um, interdependence. They're very interdependent people. Pragmatic is kind of the opposite. Pragmatic focuses on the effectiveness of the individual. It's all about individu individuality. It's individualism. It's independence. It's about how can I be independent? How can I be the freest to do things? How can I basically do what I want? You know what I mean? Or um, or do what I need to, right? It's not about it's not about my contributions to the group or getting other people to agree with me. It's about what I want to do or what I need to do for myself, etc. That is a pragmatist, right? Very independent focused. Whereas someone who is a fo uh, affiliative, they're focused on interdependence with other people. They're all about um, being focused on. Uh, they're all about being focused on others more other focus and oftentimes they've been they've been accused of being like uh too focused on other people's too uh, you know too centered on others right to the point where they can like their risk of being a doormat right although yes some types are even way more doormatish and that's an intp oh wait that would mean like you know the intp is pragmatic though yes primarily but their secondary uh, side of their mind their esfj subconscious is very affiliative, right? And that's where the doormat uh, behavior could potentially come in. You see what I'm saying here? So, so yeah, so the focus of the affiliative is the interdependent um, and the focus of the pragmatic is independence, right? Now, the intention behind this, you know, according to Dr. Linda Benner's for affiliative is all about inclusions. They, they want to be very inclusive of people. You know, and this is kind of where a lot of uh, social justice warriors come into play because the majority of social justice warriors out there are affiliated people. They are SJs and they are NFs because they don't want anyone to feel discluded, right? It's all about inclusion. Inclusion is super mega importance to the affiliatives, right? So, uh, whereas with uh, the pragmatics, they're focused on like self-determination or things that are self-evident or self-manifest destiny or, or what is my destiny? What, where am I going? What do I want to do? Or what, what is the experiences that I'm seeking, right? What are the goals that I have to achieve, right? It's all about excellence and personal achievement, right? From the pragmatic point of view. So yeah, that's where you have the SPs and the NTs out there, the artisans, the intellectuals of the world who are focused on being autonomous and uh, they're, they're seeking outcomes and they want to be able to make decisions that causes them to reach those outcomes or those goals faster, right? Whereas an affiliative person, they're more focused on, uh, like they more, they, they, they they behave more with a with a priority of you know having a cooperation and uh, they want agreement and uh, they they always want to check in with the norms and the values you know Dr. Linda Barris Barron says this specifically um, being affiliative is all about checking in with the norms or the social values or the social norms of the group or the community or the collective or uh, the area that they're with, or with the family. It's always it's always a group thing, or it could be like a study group at school, for example, or the classroom, it doesn't matter, just whatever group setting, right? Whereas 
And the pragmatics are trying to be as autonomous as possible, right? That's the other side. So if you have someone in your family or if you yourself are very autonomous, chances are they are pragmatic, chances are they are an SP or an NT. Or if they're more focused on getting cooperation or agreement with people, uh, then they're more, you know, affiliative. So now they, they have different, you know, like, they could be taken, you know, they could be in their comfort zone or out of their comfort zone. And um, Linda Behrens also states that uh, affiliatives need, they need like defined roles, right? They, it's all about having defined roles and they need people getting along or cooperating. If, if you're in a social situation where there are people not getting along or they're not cooperating, the affiliative people will literally be triggered. Like they will be triggered, not even able to like handle it, like super triggered, right? So that presents that presents a problem, you know, because of how triggered they are. Uh, and they need to have that harmony. They need to have that cohesity, that cohesiveness within the group. Everyone needs to get along. Everyone needs to be cooperating. Everyone needs to be sharing. Sharing is a big part of being affiliative. Pragmatic, it's kind of the other way around. The pragmatic needs to be have the room to, you know, engage in taking initiative, getting things done on their own, uh, being who they are on their own. And uh, they, they wanna be able to have the freedom to take these actions regardless of what roles they may have attached to them because roles are kind of arbitrary to the pragmatic. Because the pragmatic's like, look, I need to be rewarded based on excellence and not my role, right? Here's another way of looking at it. When you're in an organization, let's say for a job or whatnot, and you have people that are rewarded for like time served, you know, and they're promoted based on how much time they served on the company instead of being like promoted based on who's the most effective worker or who has the, the most achievement, who has the most merit, right? Pragmatics focus on merit, right? SPs and NTs care about merit. Pragmat pragmatism is all about merit. Whereas with affiliative, it's actually more focused on time served per se, right? Because, oh, you put in so much time for the group, we wanna reward you for that. Whereas the pragmatic's like, wow, that guy is actually like, he has no merit and he doesn't deserve that because I'm way better at that job than he is and I should have gotten that promotion, but because he's been here an extra five years more than I did, he has seniority over me, so that means he gets to have that job? That's bullshit. Like, how does that even work? Okay, so again, it's the difference between affiliative versus pragmatic because pragmatic is focused on merit because they, they having excellence in performance, right? Um, you know, th th that's, that's direct out of Dr. Linda Barron's books. Uh, she talks about excellence in performance for pragmatics. It's very important. So, uh, so a couple of things about affiliative people. They get very uneasy when people don't work together. Uh, they get frustrated uh, by what seems to be a lack of cooperation. They get surprised when people don't like uh, having roles foisted upon them, especially with SPs and NTs. Although SPs, because they're concrete like them, they can kind of deal with that. But when it comes to abstract types like NTs, it just absolutely triggers them. It absolutely triggers them, especially on the SJ side. Although if they are abstract like the NFs, it doesn't trigger them as much. So there's different levels of trigger, <laughs> if you know what I mean, depending on the, the type of affiliative versus the type of the pragmatic, um, because some temperaments like going together. SPs love going together with SJs because they're both concrete, and then NTs love going together with NFs because they're both abstract. So they can kind of have a higher tolerance if their affiliative versus pragmatism is not aligned to each other. But if you're doing it like a, an S versus an N and they're both affiliative, and once once affiliative and once pragmatic, then that's actually gonna create even more conflict. So you gotta be aware of like how these things kind of uh, change or interact with each other, right? So just be aware of that. Uh, so um, so like uh, the pragmatics, for example, they um, they get they get they get really uneasy when things are decided for them, when decisions are made, or like when they have roles foisted upon them. It, it makes them feel like their 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 independence or their personal sovereignty is being threatened, right? And we know I talk a lot about personal sovereignty, and personal sovereignty is a very primary thing for pragmatic types. It's very primary for SPs and NTs. It's kind of a secondary thing for NFs and SJs guardians and uh, and idealists um, so guardians being SJs idealists being NFs um, it's a secondary thing personal sovereignty 
it's still a priority. It's just not as important. They're, they're, they're more, they more care about you know the group or the family as it were. But then again, they also would recognize that the sovereignty is more attached to the group than necessarily the individual, whereas the pragmatics disagree. The sovereignty would be attached more to the individual. Although from a hu that's, that's more human nature. From a human nurture standpoint, everyone should be responsible for their own personal sovereignty because personal sovereignty leads to self-respect. Because if you have self-respect, you can basically get anywhere in life, right? Because self-respect, having self-respect is wise, right? And you wanna have all the wisdom that you could possibly get because if you have wisdom, you can have anything you want. If someone was going to offer me $10 billion right now, or uh, or like a bunch of wisdom, what would I take? I would take the wisdom because if I have all the wisdom in the world, guess what? That means I could actually get that 10 billion, if not more than 10 billion, as a result of having that wisdom in my life, right? Instead of just being handed money. That's why the people who work for their money end up keeping their money, but people who are given money, especially like in the lottery, they end up addicted to drugs or in jail or dead, statistically. So it's like, okay, wow, that's that's really good, I guess. Or even like jail time too, you know? Pragmatic people don't like obstacles and they don't like roadblocks getting in the way. And sometimes they actually see roles or even affiliated people or the group itself as a roadblock. For example, uh, you know, someone studying in college or in a study group in a school and they're doing like a group project. And oftentimes the pragmatic person looks at the other people like all oh, these people are going to slow me down. They're actually going to get me. I'm going to end up having a lower grade because of them and whatnot. Or the, uh, the, the affiliatives in that group setting are like, wow, this pragmatic person is just going to make our grade go down because he's not cooperating with us. That lack of cooperation is going to continue to cause a problem. And it's going to be even more dramatic here, here, and here, and here, and here. And it's like, holy crap, what are we going to do? You know what I mean? And it's like, okay, wait a minute. But who's right? Who's right? Is the affiliative person right? No. Is the pragmatic person right? No. See, they're all wrong. Or they're both right. See, it's not, it's not about that. It's about, so... You have to interact with people. You have to, you have to respect the affiliative, and as much as you have to respect the pragmatic, and you have to recognize that there are affiliative people and that there are pragmatic people, but you also have to recognize that there are technically less pragmatic people on the planet. So you have thirty plus fifteen percent, so that's forty-five percent of the world's population are pragmatic, whereas 55% of the world's population are technically affiliative. So you have to be aware of that, that the uh, affiliative technically has the majority and the pragmatic are the minority. But you still have to respect both. And I would challenge the affiliatives to respect the pragmatics more because they have the majority, right? And it's not necessarily fair to the pragmatics, you know? You get, uh, you get people like Gandhi, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, Martin Luther King. Those are very affiliative individuals, right? But uh, you get pragmatic people like Benjamin Franklin, right? He's very pragmatic. Or, or Nikola Tesla, right? He's very pragmatic. So it's as a result of them being so pragmatic that they were able to have the success they were. But the other guys, they were very successful with what they were because of how affiliative they are. So again, it's just two sides of the same coin. Almost they're able to get to where they're going or get their agenda handled or their goals met. As a result, um, there's just different ways of going about doing it. One focuses on the group and, and cooperation and agreement while the other focuses on the individual, right? It's kind of, you know, and if we want to talk about extremes, we could talk about political extremes. We could talk about, uh, ooh, communism or, or, ooh, Randian objectivism, whereas communism is all about the commune. I mean, it seems that way at least. And then there's Randian objectivism, which focuses on the individual and the power of the individual and the power of the individual, which could be seen as overtly selfish or way too selfish, for example. You know, I mean, Ayn Rand herself was a pragmatic because she was an INTJ, right? Because she's an NT. So, so be aware of that. Uh, um, so uh, affiliatives can be like seen, you know, as way too focused on other people, uh, potentially at risk of being a doormat. Uh, pragmatics can be seen as way too self-centered, way too selfish, way too independent. Uh, you know, not willing to work with others, do not work well with others, etc. You know, that could be t potentially an issue. Um, uh, <laughs> And uh, pragmatic people kind of sometimes get surprised when they're uh, when other people are offended offended at how independent they are, you know. Whereas, you know, like I said, affiliatives get surprised when people don't like receiving roles and they get frustrated on roles, uh, you know, being foisted upon them, or when people have a lack of uh, cooperation. So, and, and another way to look at um, affiliative versus pragmatic, and, and I've always enjoyed this. Um, 
So uh, this is one way that you can actually like uh, be aware of um, you know some of the um, ways of uh, you know so, uh, like a practical example, a practical example or a practical model that you could use uh, in determining if someone is like uh, affiliated versus pragmatic. And here it is. It's it's an old saying. So, or it's a uh, it. I don't know, maybe a precept or, but it goes like this, you know, never ask forgiveness, always ask for permission, right? Or always ask forgiveness, but never ask permission, right? So think about that. A pragmatic person always seeks to ask forgiveness, never asking permission. They take action, they take the initiative, they make, they just make it happen regardless of the consequences because they know and believe in themselves that yes, this is the right thing for me to do, I am going to do it. I do not need to ask these people for permission to do the right thing, I am going to do the right thing, they can get over it. And then after I've done the right thing and after I've proven that it works and my idea works and I am correct, then I'll ask them forgiveness as a result, right? I would have to do this all the time, especially the affiliated people, especially when I played EVE Online, for example, and I was in this alliance called Northern Coalition. I was even in this alliance called Goon Swarm as well, and um, this is back when I played video games. Instead of playing video games, I do a YouTube channel instead, if you know what I mean. Because I don't have time for video games anymore. Like, I have to be a man, I have responsibilities, you know, a career, uh, I have a father, and I have to focus on my health, and I'm here educating you folks on YouTube and on my podcast so that we can continue to uh, help people understand themselves and each other just like Dr. Linda Behrens does. Anyway, when I was playing games, you know, I I would often make decisions without asking uh, authority figures for permission because, for one, I believed that those authority figures were roadblocks themselves. Like they took too long to decide anything. It's kind of like that... Uh, it's kind of like that movie um, Spies Like Us uh, with Dan Aykroyd and... Uh, Chevy Chase. That's a great film. If you've never watched Spies Like Us, you should definitely uh, watch Spies Like uh, Like Us. And for some reason, anytime I think of that movie, I think of two scenes: the the one scene with the hot chick, the hot Russian chick, and the uh, the other the other scene uh, where where he's talking about, you know, okay, well, we have 20 minutes before this nuclear uh, missile goes off. And then uh, they'll, then then Washington will need an additional twenty minutes to, to make a decision. And it's like, yeah, it's because they're very they're affiliative. They're they're waiting on the group consensus to make their decision because they're they're allowing affiliative authoritarian authoritarian point of view to uh, make the decision. Right? I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to make the decision on my own because I know it's the right thing to do. And then after I've implemented it, then I'll talk to the authority figures and I'll ask them forgiveness after the fact because I've already proved that it works. Whereas I know that if I went to them and asked them permission, they're just going to tell me no right off the bat. So I'm not even going to do that. I'm not even going to give them the chance to tell me no and then be like, well, we told you no. No, no, no. I'm just going to do it. And they should be like, oh, well, you didn't tell me I couldn't do it, right? See, that's a very pragmatic point of view. Affiliative is the opposite. Affiliative will always ask permission. That's the issue. They will always ask permission ahead of time, right? So you just got to be aware, you know, of that difference with affiliative. Uh, another 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 political example also of uh, affiliative versus pragmatic. If you have like a, a cube uh, or no or a, or it's, it's it's a square broken up into four sub squares, and on the top you have authoritarian, and at the bottom you have libertarian. So you have the authoritarian left, and then you have the authoritarian right. Then you have the libertarian left and the uh, libertarian right. And it's where on this grid of four does anyone do? They, they, they like take this test and they end up on one of these things and then sometimes they're centrists or whatever, but uh, affiliative people would test typically authoritarian. If it's like authoritarian left or authoritarian right, whatever, I don't care, but though they would be authoritarian because they're very authority based. You ask permission first and you give people the power to make rules and you ask permission if you can like potentially bend or break a rule or amend rules or whatever. Whereas libertarian is more pragmatic approach. The pragmatic folk would actually test as libertarian left or libertarian right, for example. This is this is this is typically now. Of course, there are some SJs that do test libertarian left or right because they've developed their own personal philosophy, or they're more harmonized within you know or integrated between the four sides of their mind. Yes, there are people that test differently. I'm just saying in general, people who are affiliative prefer authoritarian, and people who are pragmatic prefer libertarian. 
right? That that's just that's just kind of a difference. And so and that and the majority of people prefer authoritarian and the minority of people prefer libertarian. That's just how it works. So anyway, um just remember affiliative focuses on interdependence and uh you know community and being about the group and the and the and the effectiveness of the group and inclusion whereas the pragmatic is focused on what on being independent it's on about being freedom and having freedom uh like free to do things and it's about effectiveness it's about excellence it's about merit it's about self-determination or having autonomy etc so when you're looking at somebody you need to find out their type you know you just like okay is this guy pragmatic or is he uh affiliative and then you you go through all these uh, different things and you, these different traits you could find out okay yes he's pragmatic okay yes he's affiliative so so let's do an example on the type grid um, let's say you're you're dating some girl. You want to know if you're compatible with her and whatnot. And uh, you know you're going out on a first date, and you're like, okay, yeah, she's very direct and she's very movement. Um, so okay, she, uh, so she's definitely chart the course automatically. So okay, yeah, now I know she's an introvert because uh, she's chart the course. Also known as see it through or finisher type. So she's either an ISTJ, an ISTP, an INTJ, or an INFJ. Okay, and you know me in this example. Let's say I was dating this woman, and I'd be an ESTP in this example. So. And, uh, and then I talked to her more and then I realized that she's very concrete. So I've eliminated INFJ and INTJ from that. I'm like, oh, thank God. So she could either be an ISTP or an ISTJ, which one? Okay, so one of them is pragmatic, one of them is affiliative. I start talking to her more and she doesn't really seem uh, very focused on independence or autonomy. She's constantly talking about other people, constantly talking about her family, talking about uh, people at, uh, at her work. Uh, and uh, you know she's she's asking me permission to do things. You know, asking me permission to order something. Uh, you know, for the menu because we're at a date right now. Uh, and she seems very interdependent. Like, okay, yeah. So she is actually affiliative, which means she's an SJ. So. Uh, there we go. I know she's an ISTJ, and thank God she's an ISTJ because that's super high compatible with an I ESTP, and I could definitely see this relationship working for the long term. I'm definitely going to invest more into it, right? So that's just in a dating example that you could use on how important it is the type grid is, so that if you know your type, you know other people's type, you know how you jive with them, and you know whether you know how to behave yourself uh, around them to get the best possible result. And that's why we do this. That's why we're learning about the type grid. That's why we're doing season 15. And which, by the way, if you're watching season 15 and you haven't watched season two, I recommend you watch season two because, or listen to season two because season two provides the foundation that we have for the type grid so that once you have that foundation, kind of that uh, more general uh, level, and then you get into season 15, this is more of like the deep, uh, we're getting into the weeds, right? Whereas the, the season two is like the forest, if that makes sense. So anyway... I think that's it for this lecture. If you found this lecture useful, helpful, educational, enlightening, insightful, and all those other crazy adjectives that I throw in there to describe how awesome these lectures are, or at least I would hope you'd think or feel that these lectures are awesome, uh, please subscribe to the channel here on YouTube and also on our podcast. Leave a like while you're at it, and if you have any questions or comments about affiliative versus pragmatic, leave it in the comment section below, and I will do my best to answer your questions. And uh, I like I spend like probably two hours a day reading comments, uh, so just so you know that I, I do that. Although I don't get 100% of the little comments because sometimes I actually have to go back to some of the videos themselves and then scroll down to look at all of them because for some reason YouTube doesn't give me an alert for every single comment. Like they do for like new fresh comments, but like replies, it doesn't doesn't really keep track of replies very well. So I do my best to try to look for your replies. Also, if you've not joined our Discord server yet, please do. We're gonna be having another Q&A session coming up here pretty soon after I get back from the East Coast because I'm flying to the East Coast next week. I'm going to be in Ohio. And uh, so uh, while I'm in Ohio, uh, I'm going to be doing a couple of lectures. But when I get back from Ohio, I'm definitely going to be doing a, a Q&A session the following week. So if you want to get your questions in for that Q&A session, join the Discord server, put them in the Q&A section, and uh, there's a chance that they will be uh, answered uh, in the show. I try to answer them all in order as they come, etc. Also, if you haven't joined the Bay Area uh, meetup group, make sure you're in it. Um, actually, as I travel uh, with this uh, meetup group, which by the way, the link to the meetup group and the Discord is in the description of this lecture. Uh, if uh, the as I travel, I'm actually gonna be scheduling meetups in various uh, locations. Um, 
as I travel so that uh, we could have like meetups while I'm like out of town too. So look for those. I'll be talking about them, at least announcing them on the Discord server. So that's another reason for you to get on the Discord server in case there's like a meetup that's scheduled and you don't want to miss it and it's in your area. I'm going to be traveling the country a lot um, or for the, like the rest of this year, uh, including uh, I got another trip to Seattle, I got another trip to Atlanta, I got another trip to Denver. I'm going to be all over the place. So because of how all over the place I'm going to be, let's take advantage of these meetups and definitely, uh, you know, do that and uh, have fun and see each other, meet each other, type each other, you know, and discuss uh, Jungian analytical psychology or self-actualization, whichever one. So anyway. Uh, that was uh, that's it for tonight. Um, I expect to be back tomorrow. So uh, y'all have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow.